welcome back to On Art. Alok Ved Menon is one half of the poetry duo Dark Matter Poetry and a fashionista. I interviewed them when they visited Delhi for a poetry performance. It's hard for me to describe exactly what I do because I feel like I'm taking a bit of everything and putting it together. I do a lot of things, but some of the hats I wear are that I'm a performance artist, I'm a community organizer, and I'm a fashionista. Alok Ved Menon lives in New York City. We met them when they were touring India performing spoken word poetry. Alok puts on poetry performances with their artistic partner Janani Balasubramaniam. Together, the two of them are dark matter poetry. There's a joke in my culture that we never smile in our family photographs. In my culture, eventually a baby turns into a gender, turns into a role, turns into a mother, turns into a servant, turns into regret, turns into repeat. I start wearing women's clothing when I'm 21 years old. And it's the first time in my life I can look in the mirror and not see the man I grew up terrified of staring back. Can I tell you what it means to wear an entire body as a wound? Can I show you what it means to watch a gender rewind itself? I put on a dress and turn into that photo of my grandmother in her 20s. Turns into what if I tell her who I am? Turns into leaving my apartment. Turns into getting on a train. Turns into a woman pointing and laughing turns into a man pointing and spitting, turns into there's nowhere to escape on a moving train, turns into a beating heart, turns into running out of the next stop, turns into running to my grandmother's apartment, turns into her telling me that I dress this way to draw attention to myself, turns into her blaming me for my own violence, turns into isn't gender already always about being blamed for your own violence, turns into me sometimes believing her, turns into gifting her man for her birthday. Look how carefully we document all of the violence that has been done to us in the name of gender. Tonight, my grandmother will call me the biggest disappointment in her life. Spoken word finds its roots in the Black Power movement in the United States. It's grown as a means to share personal experiences and reclaim authority for marginalized groups for decades. We allow her we have grown up the main storytelling. Spoken word requires rhythm, energy, verbs, and occasional staccato. All while weaving metaphors and engaging your audience. At the end of the day, what's more interesting and important about your life is building meaning. And I don't think that there's a currency to meaning, actually. And I think to try to quantify meaning is already antithetical. Uh, and I understand our parents and our, our society when they're worried that we're not going to make enough money. And that's true. And I don't want to pretend that everyone should quit their jobs and become freelance artists because it's a struggle unto itself. But I do think that art should become a core foundation of every creative person's life because if it does it, they live profoundly unhappy lives because there's a sense of urgency to being an artist for many of us where if we do not do this, we do not live. I mean, we might be existing, but we're not living and there's a really crucial distinction. If yoga is more your thing, then you might be interested in Mojarto's new curation on mojarto.com. Rachel Charles and Rahul Kumar will tell us more about what's on the website. Well, Anu, as you can see in the city, we're always surrounded by noise and stress, which is why I'm going to go and pick up my yoga mat, meet Rahul, because he wants to talk some yoga to me, where he says he's going to give me a sort of perfect balance. Let's see. Within the calmness of Anand Gram, just the turn off the busy road I took, he did look like he discovered some sort of key to managing life and all that comes with it. But in my little understanding, most who practice yoga wore a slightly different look, at least on their bodies. Hey Rahul, how are you? Hey Charles, you're late. Yes, and you've disappointed me as well by not wearing anything as close to what I thought you would because I've come all prepared my yoga mat thinking on urban yogi, you're going to give me a lesson in yoga. Right. No, 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 no. We're going to talk about urban yogi. We're not going to sit and do yoga. That's the collection on Mojato. Mojato. There are two forces that work on us, right? The Mars and the Eros. No, 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 no. Rahul, Rahul, stay, stay on Earth. Stay okay. on I'll, I'll, I'll break Mars, it down. Eros, no, no, no. no. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. Simplify, simplify. I'll break it down. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Mars is, is, is the fiery planet and that urges us to embrace um, imbalance, uh, impurities. Right. And, and also fires the ambition in us. Right. right. The other hand, the other end of the spectrum, the uh, influence of Eros 
on us is uh, to be calm, to put our feet down on earth, on the ground, and keep walking and keep moving. When I uh, when I look at this body of work, uh -huh. right, as you're saying, will I be able to make sense of everything that you're saying? Absolutely, you will be able to. In the images, through this. That's the concept of a curated show. Right. It's that theme and all the artists within the theme sort of take their practice, their medium, their style and interpret this medium in their own way. In fact, it's a curated show. I remember now you Georgina met the curator. Maddox. Yes, Absolutely. you met the curator. Yes. At yes. the art fair. You're right. Right, right. So why, why don't we, I don't know, would, can, can we just sure, listen? Sure, why, do, why don't we listen to, to Georgina's interpretation of the maybe a few artists And maybe a few artists, it. absolutely. Right, right. You always constantly have to strike a balance and the delicate balance is struck by mankind himself who is the urban yogi. City, architecture, social spaces and you know how these different social spaces in, in an urban space merges and converges and also make its own existence by itself. Urbanization and the desire to hold on to your inner, inner core of being. My whole practice is about conveying the stories and there are different symbols of conveying the stories. Dreams are one of them and I feel that's how stories in our culture can be built up. So Charles, wasn't that fascinating? Definitely you know, was. Urban yogi as a concept can really be used uh, to, uh, you know, by as many as over a dozen artists to interpret this theme and concept in, in their own visual language. With you all the way Rahul, but you know, I think even the yogis would agree that we all need to eat. That's part of the balance, Do right? So think beyond food ever, Charles? How can I when there's this lovely palette of such healthy food in front of me? I mean, it could not get simpler than this, yet so colorful. Right. I mean, you know, the very the knife that you're just holding can actually be used as the key and primary tool to make a beautiful body of work. And you spoke of palette. Wow, you must tell me more about this because I thought a knife can only be used to sort of cut up things on a plate or cheese spread. <laughs> Let's talk about palette scapes then. Palette scapes is a beautiful solo show right. in on Mojato by uh, Nupur Kundu. She's an abstract painter, extremely colorful works. She uses impasto and uses only knife. Impasto, I mean, I'm just thinking like pesto, impasto, I mean... Think beyond food. And impasto is the material that's used to create those layers and the 3D effect. Wow, she doesn't use a brush? Well, she probably uses the handle uh, opposite end of the brush and as you would see in this work. Well, Anu, something new to learn from Rahul every week. Uh, there he goes into his food after talking so much about how to use the knife to create art. Hmm? Hmm. Anyway, back to you Anu and um, we'll see you next week. Over the month of February, Indra Gandhi National Center for the Arts held a retrospective in honor of Satish Gujral. It was prolific and awe-inspiring, covering his paintings and his sculptures. I met with Satish Gujral and we talked about a life spent making art and his unlikely friendship with Fidel Castro. Throughout the month of February, Indira Gandhi National Center for Art has celebrated one of India's greatest, most prolific living artists, Satish Gujral. The exhibition spans Gujral's lifetime spent making paintings, sculptures and some incredible friends. We visited the exhibit and met Satish Gujral and his family. Gujarat's art reflects and celebrates his 90-year life, which included living through India's partition, becoming deaf, moving to Mexico, and befriending Fidel Castro. His artwork includes emotional portraits, small-scale sculptures, and wall-spanning installations. It is a very small quantity which I could put in there because idea was not to put everything, but to select a small thing from every phase of my work. Not more than one or two paintings are picked from one page. If I had a large place, it must be at least 10 to 15 times 
more than it is remembering that this education is showing 5 percent on my way. One of the most staggering elements from the show put on by the Gujral Foundation is that it represents such a small fraction of the work Satish Gujral has created. One could spend hours in the exhibitions and yet can't help but realize how much more of this fascinating man's life there is to discover. He is skilled across artistic styles and so his work is set to reflect a lot of intricacy and finesse. What has happened? The more you grow, the more creative you become. I paid more hours these days than I did in my youth. We hope that with this show, we can introduce you to some artists and styles that you've never seen before and celebrate the ones that you love. But we can't do that without feedback from you. So please let us know how we're doing by emailing onart at ndtv.com. And until then, I'll see you next week. Make something beautiful. Good night.